Welcome to Prompt Engineering Part 2. In this video, we're going to go through some really advanced ways you can optimize your prompts so you get consistent and reliable outputs. This is a game changer. I've been really optimizing my prompts so that they really give me consistent results. And it's made a huge difference in terms of how much time I have to spend editing after I get an output. If you want to go back and watch part one, I'll put that link in the description. TLDR on that. Basically, there's three main components to any good prompt. You have the information that you're providing the prompt, like ChatGPT or whatever you're using to make your outputs. You're putting information into it that either you wrote or that you have permission to use. ChatGPT and all these other large, large language models, in my opinion, really fail when you ask them to start from scratch, but they're super good when you give them specific information to work off of. So that's the information that you put in. Then you have your instruction, which is what you want ChatGPT, OpenAI, whatever, to do with that information. What are you trying to actually accomplish? And then you have your output format, which is how you want the AI model to format the output that it gives you. So those are the three main components. Now today, what I wanna walk through is how to actually construct each of those components, how to lay them out, how to put markup language on your prompts so that the AI understands and is best able to execute on those prompts. Now, there's a lot that kind of goes into it, this, the way that I'm writing these prompts executes against the AI's strength, which is manipulating one form of content into another form of content within specific parameters. It needs a very, very uh, dialed in. That's the best way to put it. It needs a dialed in way of actually manipulating whatever you're giving it so that it can give you a positive output. I'm going to just start showing you because it's easier that way. Let me share my screen and we'll jump right in. All right, here's the prompt that I want to go through and kind of show you a few main components. So when you get into optimizing your prompts, there's really three things that you want to key in on. One is markup language. So if you're familiar with HTML, that's a markup language. It's a fancy way of saying that you're marking up the raw text so that it has reference points in it that you can refer back to. The second thing you want to key in on is a build order for the AI. You want to give it a linear set of instructions to follow. From what I'm seeing, and other people are corroborating this as well, it's not good when you ask it to run multiple things at the same time. So you need to go in order. So do this, then do that, then do that. So that is the second thing. And then the third thing is giving it very, very specific instructions around how to format the output, but also what tone and style and length and which tense you want it to speak in, what voice you want it to speak in, whether it's first, second, or third person. So you can really get specific and we will dive into all of that as we look at this prompt. Now, the first thing to highlight here is the markup language. Now, you don't have to follow HTML. If you know HTML, use it, it's easy. Uh, if you don't, you can kind of make your own language, which I prefer that because I think it's more fun to make up my own language. It's like, you know, you get to make your own language, why not? Um, so you see here, I have these different sections marked up, like the example quiz is in these, uh, greater than less than signs. Uh, I have brackets around where I'm telling it to create answer choices and I'm using different components here. Now, one thing to note is that I'm making this prompt in a doc and so I'm able to do things like make this text bigger, right? But in the OpenAI, when I copy this over, it's not going to carry that through. So be aware of that. It's not going to carry through sizes of text or anything like that. So don't use that as your markup language. Markup language is brackets, quotation marks, uh, caret sign, whatever you wanna use uh, to mark up your text. Now, the reason why you do this is because it gets confused if you don't. <laughs> if you don't do this, then it will pull random bits of information from different parts of your prompt 
And it's going to basically guess as to where you want it to pull from. It's going to get very confused. So you want markup language for everything. You'll see how complex, I mean, it's not actually complex. It's just markup that I have. And I'm just going to scroll through this whole thing to show you that it's all marked up like that. So that's the number one component, markup language. Big, big game changer. If you don't do anything else, just do that and it will make your prompts that much better. Now, second thing is to give it a concrete, and I mean concrete, order of operations or build order. It will not succeed if you tell it to do things at the same time. It will get confused and give you really poor outputs. But if you tell it, do this, then do that, then do that, it can do that, especially if you're feeding it back in what it's already created to do the next step. So for this example, I have it say, read this article, and then you paste in an article here. In my prompt here, this is a prompt to make a quiz. So read this article, and then it says, now make a quiz following the example format below based on that article. Now, the important thing here is that it reads the article first and then makes the quiz, because if you tell it to do both at the same time, it just like falls flat on its face. It will come out with some weird stuff that makes no sense. So you wanna make sure that you do that. Now, you also wanna uh, go back, going back to the markup language, you have your example quiz in these, uh, it's sectioned off here and I have a closing tag at the end because you really want this to be marked off from the instructions, you want a clear delineation between the output format and the instructions. All right, now the third component that's really important when you're optimizing your prompts is the tone, sometimes the exact words that you use. So I'm gonna just key in on this quiz title here and I have it saying, what's your best path, comma way, comma method, comma strategy, comma approach, comma routine to a person's goal or ideal scenario or dream life based on the article. So what's happening here? I'm telling it, I want my quiz title to be formatted in this exact way, but choose between these words. And the words are separated by a comma, right? Like this is common stuff that you would experience when you're downloading like a CSV file or something like that. Separating using a comma, super common markup language. And then in the second part, I'm using ORs. So again, this is just an example that you don't have to be super stringent with your markup language. I'm using commas and then I'm switching and using English like OR, right? So OR or comma both works. So play around with what works for you. You don't have to follow a specific language, you know, and it's easier that way because you don't have to just always be so specific. I want to pull up another example from later on in this where I'm telling it to write in a specific way. So these outcome descriptions, I am telling it to start off with your best comma ideal comma, et cetera. So now I'm letting it be a little creative. And then I'm telling it the first sentence should define what the outcome is. Second sentence, talk about how this outcome will lead to a, lead to a positive outcome. And then third sentence is to give two specific ways to use this outcome for positive growth. So I'm telling it to write text, but I'm telling it how to write the text and I'm telling it, I already fed it the article so it knows what to base that text off of. Now, where am I getting this article from? I'm just pulling from Wikipedia uh, because that's open source or you know, you have to get permission basically. Some Wikipedia articles, you do need to cite your source. So make sure that you are being clear with that if you're pulling information from anywhere. It's best if it's something that you wrote anyways, so that it knows your style. So I pull that, I put it into my prompt here, and then I'm gonna put that whole thing into the OpenAI Playground. So let me just copy all of this, and then I'll show you in real time, like how this actually will generate a quiz. Give me just one minute. <laughs> I could, there's probably a faster way to copy this, but you know, all right. So you'll see it gets pretty long as we build this all out. So I'm copying the article. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to run that. 
in OpenAI. And I'm using a temperature of 0.48 in this point because I want it to be somewhat random, but not super random. And I'll click Submit. And there we go, off to the races. So it makes a really great quiz. It's formatted in a way that's super easy to copy and paste into Interact or any other tool that you're using. We're actually, this is what we're doing to build our tool. So uh, you know that I'm really serious about this because I want this to be repeatable thousands or hundreds of thousands of times. So we're really getting specific with this. Now, my main takeaway from learning this optimization process is you can get very, very, very specific. And the more specific you get, the better. The more you mark up your text, the better. The more you tell it tone and length and things like that, the better. And I'll turn off my screen share. Uh, but you can see, yeah, this just gives a beautiful output. And this is extremely consistent, works every single time. And this is just magical if you're trying to actually scale something up. So yeah, that is how to optimize a prompt. Hope you find this helpful. Uh, you can subscribe for more uh, content like this. We are building an AI tool for creating quizzes and we're learning a lot about how to actually prompt effectively in a way that scales because we're going to need to scale up to, like I said, hundreds of thousands or millions of quizzes being generated. So you can follow along as we're doing this. We'll have more parts to this prompting prompt engineering series. So subscribe on YouTube and uh, stay in the loop.